Hello to you. Today I want to make a low speed generator and it is easy to make and there are many people who are looking to buy such a generator. This small generator can have good voltage at low speed. Of course, this is an electric motor related to the car radiator fan. This is a used motor. Many of us would love to have a small home wind farm. This generator can create a suitable voltage for charging a 12 volt battery with a low wind turbine speed. And of course, it can provide 110V or 220V electricity with an inverter connected to the battery. Therefore, we can have a small power plant with a wind turbine and this low-speed generator, a suitable battery and an inverter. Making this generator will be very simple and cheap, and anyone who has a little knowledge can make it. Let's see how to do it. These two electric motors that you see are both second-hand radiator fan motors. Their consumption power is between 150 watts and 200 watts. Now I want to spin them both at 800 to 900 RPM and compare their output. First, we will try this one, which is a little bigger. These used motors are very cheap and are plentiful in the market. Maximum voltage 3.75 volts. And the maximum current is 4.75 amps. Now we test the smaller motor. Maximum current 8 amps. Maximum voltage 4 amps. The output power of this black electric motor is more than this other motor, even though it is smaller. So I choose this. Now I will open it and remove the rotor. This is the rotor and this is the stator, which includes two arc-shaped magnets. The thickness of the wires used in the rotor is 0.9 millimeters. This arc-shaped magnet is almost the same size as the stator magnet, and the size of the coil ring is the same as the length of the magnet. Therefore, each ring includes five stacked teeth of the rotor.
The winding of this rotor is done by special devices, and therefore it consists of two winding sections, which I mark the points on the commutator bar's connection. and they contain two separate places and are 180 degrees apart. But since we are winding by hand, we have a beginning and an end at the same point during winding. Now, first, I have to open the wires connected to the commutator and remove the existing wires from the rotor and replace them with thinner wire and more turns. I use a micro wire cutter and separate the wire connection from the commutator. I hope it is clearly seen. First, we separate the end of the wire and start unwinding the coil of the first loop and count the number of loops. The coil loops are 17 turns and with these 17 turns, this voltage and amperage have been created. The number of turns of the rest of the coil is exactly the same and the diameter of all the rings is exactly 5 stacked teeth. Fortunately, ceramic glaze is used in this rotor and in the place where the wires are placed, and it does not need insulating paper. Let's go for winding. The total volume of the wire that was open from the rotor was this much and I think it is less than 100 grams. Well, the wire I want to use has a diameter of 0.4 millimeters. Of course, this wire is thinner and less current passes through it, but the voltage increases with the increase in the amount of winding. With a simple ratio, we can find the number of turns of the coil we want. If you remember, the voltage obtained from the rotation of the motor was 4 volts, and the number of turns of its coils was 17 turns, so if we want to have a voltage of 16 volts, we need 68 turns of the wire to have screws. But we consider 70 rounds. For winding, we first remove the varnish from the wire head and do this with heat and sandpaper, and then we connect it around one of the edges of the commutator.
Now the first loop of 70 turns is completed and a part of the wire must be removed from the varnish and connected to the side edge of the commutator and the groove of the coil is changed by one step and we continue the work. Now the second loop is finished and I burn a suitable part of the wire with heat and then remove the varnish with sandpaper. Now I will wind the next groove. The whole winding of the rotor is finished and the end of our copper wire is connected to the same starting point. Of course, before connecting the end of the wire, we must make sure the connections of all parts of the commutator with an ohmmeter. You can see that the connections are correct. Now we return the edges on the commutator to their original state. In order to prevent the coil from changing, I use 123 instant glue.
که میچرخه You can see that it easily generates 6 volts of electricity by turning it by hand. And with 800 to 900 revolutions, it produces approximately 16 volts of electricity. Now with a digital voltmeter it also shows a maximum of 15.90 volts and our calculation was correct and now it is easy to charge a 12 volt battery. Now we measure the amount of current. The amount of current is 3.28 amperes. And now we test a 12V30W bulb. The lamp turns on easily. We are doing the last test on this generator and here I want to rotate the generator with this bigger drill at 2500 revolutions per minute and see how many volts of electricity it produces. Here, I have connected the output wire of the generator directly to the multimeter because the probe wires are thin and do not transmit current well. First, we measure the voltage. Maximum 47.6 volts. and measuring the amount of current. Maximum 5.5 amps. Now I light a 12 volt 30 watt lamp with it, will the lamp burn?
Yes, the lamp burned easily. Therefore, with this generator, a 12 volt battery can be charged at low voltage, and it is very suitable for a small wind power plant. You can see that it easily produces 6 volts by turning it by hand. One tip is to try to use a motor with a longer shaft because a short shaft has its own problems. I have drawn the general scheme of a small home wind power plant in one shape for you. I hope you like this video. Until the next program, bye.